in 2004, amidst the growing concerns, the government announced the liquidation of the DFC. This was in November of 2004. And by that time, when the rumors were going around, our clients, unfortunately, began to withhold their payments because of the uncertainties. And so this led to the um, increase in our non-performing portfolio. And so this is a part that we don't necessarily like to talk about, the, the not so fun times of DFC, but it has been what has shaped who we are today. So in 2005, there was a commission of inquiry which was um, tasked to investigate the operations of the DFC for the period 1999 to 2004. Now, notwithstanding all the uncertainties of the DFC, the DFC can proudly say that they were able to meet all their foreign financial in, uh, obligations without the government's assistance. 2013 was a memorable time. It's when the DFC celebrated 50 years of existence. And true to style and form, the DFC celebrated in grand fashion. There was a rebranding campaign of, uh, as part of the celebration and the formation of the new logo that we see there changed from the tractor and the house to what we currently use as our logo. During that time, we realized profits of $3.2 million and there was the adoption of the five-year business plan. 2016, investor confidence. The DFC came a long way and is still moving forward. And we know that we're doing well when partners such as the CDB are willing to continue to fi finance us. The CDB approved a $40 million line of credit for on lending, the largest facility extended directly to the DFC. The DFC also became a member of Alide, and if you were paying attention to what the CEO was saying, we know that recently we received an award from Alide for being a, a formidable force in the development finance uh, scene. In 2018 and 2019, the government nominated the DFC for Green Climate Fund accreditation and our lending was focused on climate resilient renewable energy technologies.